this is the story. Um, it should be a very simple story, but it's harder than it seems. The story is how to take a number in Verilog and display it on the four by seven segment display that comes in the Nexus 2 Xilinx Spartan 3E FPGA. So uh, if you want to display a number in base 10 or in hex, you can use uh, one of these digits. So there are like 128 possible ways to illuminate these seven LEDs, right? And then you have four of them. And so you can display the number, you know, 32 or 1,000 or 9,999. Uh, these are all things, you know, that you see on displays, and displays like this are common everywhere. Um, so I want to build a driver that takes a binary number and displays that binary number represented in Verilog um, to this display. So how do you do this? I'm sure there are better designs than the one I'm describing. Um, so uh, first, a reminder about the Nexus 2. There are seven lines plus a decimal point that uh, correspond to these seven LEDs plus the decimal point LED. And the way the uh, Nexus 2 works is you write the lines active low that you want to illuminate. And then you also uh, write the digit that you want to illuminate. It's also active low. Um, so if you program it in wrong, everything except for what you want will be illuminated. And it's an easy fix. So at any rate, we want to display a number on these digits. So in um, on an Arduino in C, this is a relatively straightforward thing. You just, you know, let's say you want to write the 3 in 3,423. Well, if you do x divided by 1,000, you'll get 3 if you're doing an integer division on a microprocessor or on a Linux box. Um, if you want the remainder, you can either do the math or else you can use the modulo operator um, to get the remainder. Now that's not something that's permitted on an FPGA. Um, division is a special case that's not supported um, in a naive uh, you know, uh, code you write. So we've got a little bit of a goofy uh, system, but it works. So first off, um, my module, it's just a big monolith. I'm reading in a clock signal. So I'm just using the 50 megahertz clock. I'm reading in switches. Uh, so these eight switches will map to zero to 255 if we just interpret them as binary. Um, I'm writing out uh, display uh, LEDs. And so uh, normally these are written CA to CG in the documentation. And so I'm just writing them 0 to 6 in uh, the LSB and MSB notation. Uh, notice you can specify them in Verilog. It's really fun uh, not to have to mess around with UCFs. And then finally, uh, the actual digit we want to line up, light up. So that's also specified. So there's more registers than I need in this design. Oh, well. Um, so first off, I've got the number. And so this is the thousands part of the number, the hundreds part of the number, tens part of the number, and the ones part of the number. And these are successive uh, remainders when you divide, um, or actually when you modulo. And that'll be explained in a minute. Uh, also, I've got the digits that I'm storing. So 3,423 would be uh, written, you know, those base 10 digits would be written in these registers. They're also 7-bit. Um, again, do I need that? Probably not. Um, finally, uh, oh, never mind. So those are written, um, and never mind that bit. So I've got these two separate registers. They're useful. So these are remainders. Are these? No, nah, I don't remember. We'll see. So, uh, so I'm going to cycle through the digits. And I'm going to use human persistence of vision, just to make it seem like they're all on. It's going to be awesome. So what I do is, and I also have to have a display counter. So what I do is when the clock rises, uh, I assign the number to the switches. 
And then this number that's, you know, in between zero and 9,999, I guess it could be 10,000. I couldn't display it on the four digits though. So at any rate, this number, if the number is greater than 9,000, then num3 is nine and digit three is this sequence of bits. So this is the seven segment bits that I wanna write. Um, so remember, if you're writing nine, uh, I think there's just two segments that are off. And since the system is active low, uh, the two segments that are off are one. It's perverse, but oh well. Now, if the number is not greater than 9,000, well, actually greater than or equal to 9,000, maybe it's greater than or equal to 8,000. If it is, then this digit in the thousandth place is eight. And the digits I'm going to display are everything zero. Remember, active low, and this is the number eight. So the code follows this pattern for the thousandths place. I pick out the digit that corresponds to the thousandths place, and I, and I specify the bits that correspond to the thousandths place. And then, um, I'm sorry, I couldn't figure out how to do this in a non-blocking assignment. So this is a blocking operation. All of my register assignments are equals, not uh, caret equals. Um, so then the number, but we're just talking about the hundreds remainder, if you think about the number modulo a thousand. Um, so this is just the hundreds and the tens and the ones part of the number is the number, the thousands part of the number, minus the number three, this digit we picked out, times a thousand. And so implicitly, I'm forcing it to modulo here. Um, so I guess you could say this is a very perverse and long division. Um, and then once we have the number in the 100s place, the operation is identical. So if the number uh, up to the 100s place is bigger than 900, then the 100s digit is 9. And here's the pattern for 9. If the number isn't bigger than 900, but it is bigger than 800, um, then that digit is eight, and here's the digit for eight. And so uh, you can probably figure out by now that my algorithm for the tens place is no different. Here's my uh, hobo modulo operation, right? So I just take the hundreds number and I subtract away that digit I figured out up there, and then I get the tens place. And again, if this number with the tens place is bigger than 90, then my tens digit is nine. And so I was thinking about a 10 to the 1 uh, nomenclature and a um, 10 to the power 2 nomenclature when I did this indexing. Um, so at any rate, uh, one more cycle. So the number in the 1's place is the number in the 10's place minus this 10's digit times 10. And then the last uh, decision tree. I could implement this with a case structure, and it would be the same. Um, so then the actual display work is I've got a counter and I've got a 50 megahertz clock. You know, this algorithm certainly doesn't run. I need to run at 50 megahertz. So um, so I've got it running, I think, at, um, you know, maybe, uh, let's see, 50,000 cycles. So 50,000 times 20 nanoseconds. So what is that, like microsecond resolution? Something like that. Um, so if the display counter is 50,000, I'm starting over. So my anode is, uh, my CA is going to be the zeros place or the, the 10 to the power zero place. I reset the counter and I display uh, this digit right here. So I display the least significant bit. Um, if my counter is 12 and a half thousand cycles, um, then I'm going to display the second uh, most least significant bit, and I'm going to use the 10 to the power 1 digit to display, um, and et cetera. And so you cycle through these individual digits uh, faster than you can see, and the display looks awesome. So in a minute, I will attach the video. For now, I should tell you that this is not a great routine. It works. Um, but it, uh, it uses blocking assignments. So, um, you know, that's, that's not a great life choice. So 
Maybe there's a better algorithm out there. I just haven't read the literature to see what it is. That's it. All right, Shazam. There is my uh, base Nexus 2 board. I tried this on a basis, and um, the AN, uh, 0 and 1 and 2 and 3, they're messed up. Uh, and so I just got tired of trying to suffer the wire, wiring diagram. Nexus 2 is great. Um, so there I am, 0, 0, 0. And now I've got 1 and 3 and 2 and 4 and 5 and 6 and... Right? I mean, who cares about counting like that? Let's turn a bunch of switches on. Let's turn them all on. There, 255, 254, 253, right? So I haven't tried all 256 permutations, but I'm thinking it works. But I have to warn you, um, I think I had about, I don't know, 15, 20 different bugs in this code that I had to work out. Uh, it took a few hours to hash through everything. Um, so at any rate, there you go. A bit more fun. Um, so in the previous uh, uh, narration, I talked about this being a microsecond clock. What was I thinking about? You know, it's 1046. It's after my bedtime. Obviously, um, 50,000 times 20 nanoseconds is a millisecond. I should have had my A game on. So I changed the code. This isn't what you saw before. Now there is uh, an extra thousand in there. So now I'm running real slow. I compiled this. You know how long it takes to make a bit stream if you ever use Xilinx. And now look, Shazam! We're cycling through all the bits. So, uh, hello yip yip. There's the uh, persistence of vision, except my eyes are fast enough to see that change. There you go.